rolling the building down to the bottom of the parking lot so it's as close to the public street as we can get. Saturday morning we'll roll it out into the street. We'll have to turn it so we're heading down, it would be east. And we gotta go three blocks east and as soon as we get down there we'll take the dollies and turn them north and roll it over the new basement. You know, a couple inches is good as a mile. If we hit our marks, we can we can make a six inch opening with a 55 foot wide building. And we have everything laid out and drawn up because uh, there's no turning back. So, I mean, once you get there, you better know you can fit. And we have about two feet of clearance to make it through these two apartment buildings here on Columbia. It's a real tight squeeze here. When we did it last year, there was actually people that were able to open the window of the apartments and reach out and touch this building as it went by. It's approximately 52 feet wide, 65 feet long, and 55 feet tall. It weighs just about 350 ton. And we have the ability with the hydraulics to lean and level the building to keep it perfectly level as we go through the space. The majority of the tree trimming was done last year. The route's pretty open now. I mean, we've gone through once already, but we will have to deal with any growth or, any, you know, within a few inches, we'll still have to do a little tree trimming through the park blocks. There's hydraulics on all these dollies that are tied together, and they're in different zones. We have this one in three zones, and uh, we're able to lean the building any of the four directions that we need to to keep it level. Uh, each dolly is individually steered. Some of them have hydraulic steering to help us with it. We have two sets of steering dollies and then the rest of them are what we call caster dollies that follow the lead of the other, other two sets. It's like a shopping cart, but it's not a light shopping cart that wobbles all over the place. The dolly will just turn and follow the direction that we want it to go. It's a little bit tougher than just regular steering, but it's real handy in a situation like this when we have nine points that we have to make steer as three. So everything's got to tie together yep. and go the right direction. Coming up. We're thinking that the, the lad tower is a nice backdrop for the carriage house. Oftentimes people tend to experience the city from what I call from the knees down. So it's basically two and three stories down because as a pedestrian that's where your line of sight tends to go. As you walk around this block I think the carriage house has enough character to it and we're going to really bring out its original character that that's where your eye focuses on. And other items like the taller buildings around will tend to fade away. The church is a historic building as well, and a beautifully done building, and so it really becomes kind of a, a, a it forms a good partnership on the southern half of the block with the carriage house. Mm -hmm. I think it was a good day, and a good day for preservation, and a good day for Portland too. This is the sort of thing where people are walking up and down, they're interested in what's going on, they hear the story of the building, and I get a sense of pride that comes from them. There's always interest. You see a big building in the street, but there's also the sense of this is really cool. What are they going to use the building for? Um, what's it going to end up looking like? They're very engaged, and that's that's when preservation gets exciting. Is when it excites the populace. It's not just a small segment of people that say I love old buildings and, and that's a, about it. It's people saying this is our neighborhood, this is our city, this is our community, and these buildings are part of that. They tell the story of our community. In that sense, it's been a very good day.